Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR, and welcome back to another video. It's summertime, and do you know what that means? Well, if you've lived in Japan at any point over the last 25 years, it more than likely means a new Pokemon movie. Yes, Pokemon movies traditionally release every year, but in Japan, they actually came out on the exact same week every year from 1998 to 2019. Before our good friend the pandemic decided to delay the 2020 film to Christmas of that year. And that week I just mentioned is, you guessed it, this week. Usually any time from July 10th to 17th. But there's no new Pokemon movie this week, and there hasn't been one for three years now. By far the longest gap of the movies that the franchise has ever seen. And with there being no announcement of a 2023 movie at this point, it seems like that gap is only getting bigger. And honestly, there are a ton of potential reasons why Pokemon movies are on hiatus right now. Some speculatory and some hard evidence. So let's try and answer the question, what happened to Pokemon movies? The first reason definitely leans more into the speculative side of things, but it's also probably the one that comes to most people's minds first, so we'll get it out of the way. Mythical Pokemon. Almost all of the 23 movies focus on a new mythical Pokemon in some way, shape, or form. Usually there's some sort of a tie-in or distribution to incentivize fans to go to the movie and get their fancy new car smelling mythical in the process. In Japan only, they usually don't do it internationally. We get to go to GameStop instead. Or at least we did, now we just get to stay home and get it over Wi-Fi. But regardless, in Japan at least, which is definitely where the majority of the focus lies for these movies, there's definitely a sort of symbiotic relationship between mythical Pokemon and Pokemon movies. But nowadays, there's this weird chicken or the egg question that frequently pops up in my mind. Are the mythicals being made to advertise the movies? Or are the movies being made to advertise the mythicals? Basic logic would dictate that it's the former, because, hey, you want your products to make more money. Who cares about the actual jumble of ones and zeros the kids are downloading to their games? But with how much Pokemon makes off of merchandising new cute Pokemon, there is a chance that it could be the other way around. And since mythical Pokemon and movies both disappeared around the same time, that being 2020, it really makes me wonder which is really being prioritized here. Again, if I had to wager a guess, I'd say that the mythicals were being made for the movies. And since Secrets of the Jungle was a box office flop due to unforeseen circumstances, they may have just decided to pull the plug on mythicals, leading to less material for movies to be made out of. Okay, you may be wondering, so what if Game Freak isn't making new mythicals? Can't the anime's producers make movies without them? And the answer is, yes, they have. Pokemon Heroes, Zoroark Master of Illusions, and Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution, kinda, were all made with little or no influence from mythical Pokemon. These movies also remarkably underperformed at the box office too, which leads me to believe that the distribution component is pretty important to get butts in seats. So yes, while OLM is completely capable of making movies that don't revolve around mythical Pokemon, it's just generally less appealing to the audience they're trying to attract. Oh, and OLM is the name of the studio that produces the Pokemon anime? Sometimes I forget that isn't common knowledge. Half the time people think it's Game Freak, which is really funny. But right now, I believe OLM is fighting a bigger influence than just mythical Pokemon. This is the all-important Ash Ketchum factor. With Ash just recently being retired from the anime, the entire animated Pokemon universe is moving into a brand new era for the first time. And while the new Pokemon Horizon series is good, supposedly, I haven't watched it, interest in the Pokemon anime is currently at an all-time low. Now, the Pokemon anime's ratings have been going down in Japan for every new series since the beginning, so this news isn't too surprising. But the floor between Sun and Moon and Journeys at least seem to have stabilized a bit. But according to Japanese TV metrics, Pokemon Horizons is currently averaging below a 2.0 rating on a weekly basis. A significant decline from Pokemon Journeys. Don't ask me why TV ratings are quantified like this, I'm not an expert, I'm a guy with a microphone that makes YouTube videos. Now, I don't want to make this sound like the end of the world or anything, after all, TV ratings aren't the most reliable thing to go off of. And plus, TV in general is losing viewership every year as streaming services become more and more prominent, and Japan is no exception. Pokemon Horizons is still drawing healthy viewership in Japan, but it does seem like the departure of Ash Ketchum has relieved some interest in the show. So now, OLM has some risks to weigh. Do they make a new movie, presumably with no mythical Pokemon tie-in, no Ash Ketchum, and make it focused on Liko and Roy instead? Or do they continue the alternate universe timeline they started a few years ago with I Choose You? 
They could market it as the triumphant return of Ash, but a lot of people might see this as cheap and disingenuous, since it's the alternate universe Ash, it's not the one we've followed for 25 years. Plus, after I choose you, the alternate universe movies barely made any more money than the original universe movies did. The alternate universe was more of a short-term band-aid that they came up with to boost their revenue a bit. But it clearly didn't last. So they could make a movie about Ash's travels after becoming world champion in the core timeline, but is it too early to do something like that? He's only been gone for three months now, you can't break the emergency glass to whip out your cash cow this soon because it's gonna have no impact. Plus, this doesn't solve any long-term issues. If they keep making movies about Ash and never shift the focus to Liko and Roy, then neither the movies or the anime are going to overcome their problems. Regardless, it seems like the departure of Ash may have complicated things a bit further, as it's hard to say that anything animated without him in it would be any kind of a success. But speaking of success, we've talked a lot about the financial aspect of making Pokemon movies here, which begs the question, how much money do Pokemon movies even make? Their box office values for the last 10 movies or so have averaged around 3 billion yen, or roughly 25 to 30 million US dollars depending on the time they were made. But we also need to know the budgets for Pokemon movies, which unfortunately haven't been made public since 2000. So we only have the first three movies to work with. The first movie's budget was reportedly 5 million dollars. Pokemon 2000's budget saw a major spike going to a 30 million dollar budget. And the third movie had a 15 million dollar budget. So the data seems to be all over the place. The reason for this is that movie budgets aren't always reported in the clearest ways. Sometimes these budgets account for advertising, marketing, and distribution, sometimes they don't. This may explain the large discrepancy between the first movie's budget and 2000's budget. The first movie's budget may have only included the production cost, while 2000 has the full package. There's also this other important word we have to take into consideration, a word you probably hate a lot right now. Inflation. Inflation calculators estimate that a $15 million budget 20 years ago would cost around $26 million now. So, at the end of the day, do Pokemon movies even make a profit? Bear in mind this is very rough math, since they aren't very transparent about worldwide gross income or their current budgets for movies, but let's be generous and say that each movie makes 10-20 to 20 million dollars in profit. I know that may sound like a lot, but considering that money needs to be divided up to pay all the parties involved, that's barely anything to write home about. At least, if you're a multi-billion dollar corporation. I could use a million dollars or two if you guys don't want it. But based on what we know, it doesn't seem like Pokemon movies are particularly lucrative, at least not any time in the last 20 years. Why do you think most of them just go straight to Cartoon Network or Netflix when they arrive in the West? It's probably not even worth the hassle to put most of them in theaters for how little they profit. In Japan, three of the last six movies have been the lowest grossing among all 23, those being Hoopa and the Clash of Ages, Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel, and Secrets of the Jungle. Again, that last one had some help from the pandemic though. Maybe it's just a sign of the changing times. The pandemic turned things upside down for a lot of people, the animation industry included, and I'm sure they're probably still recovering from that. Just a few months ago, some of the Pokemon anime staff were very vocal about their lack of manpower to produce the Masters 8 arc. Between layoffs and budget cuts, it was nearly impossible to produce in a timely fashion. Hence the numerous off-weeks and recap episodes that ARK ended up having. They're probably at their absolute limits just making the show in its current state. There's probably no time or money left on the table to make a movie if they tried. There's also the ways in which Pokemon distributions have evolved. Mythicals don't need to be given away at movie theaters anymore, you can just get them at home. Not to mention mythicals just aren't all that interesting from a game aspect anymore, but that's a topic that I've more than worn out at this point. And there's also Pokemon's ever-expanding partnership with Netflix to consider. There's lots of new Pokemon projects coming out there, so maybe there's just no need for big box office films. Which, as we detailed before, probably aren't as big as we imagine them to be. I think it's honestly a combination of all the factors I discussed in this video. And perhaps the pandemic combined with labor shortages were the straw that broke the camel's back. It had been clear for a long time that these movies weren't doing all that well, so perhaps this was inevitably going to happen at some point. Am I saying that we'll never see an animated Pokemon film again? No, I highly doubt that. But if I had to guess, we'll more than likely be waiting a bit longer. I'd like to give a shout out to my channel member Jonah X for sending this topic in. I thought it was super interesting to break down, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. I'll see you guys next time.